Hi, welcome back to Amosmith.com. And today I'm going to discuss priming off the press. Almost all your presses that you buy today will have some sort of priming system built into it or have the ability to have one attached to it. Now with the RCBS, you have this little lever guy right here and this is what holds the primer. And this is what the gizmo looks like right here. This is an older press. I'm not sure if they've changed much, but I still want to cover how to change this out. Now with the lead press, I don't have it mounted because it broke. Um, you have one of these guys. And one side is large and one side is small. You just flip it around like this. And it just uses gravity to do its work. So let's get started. Now there's a lot of advantages to priming using your press rather than a hand priming system, but there's trade-offs too. With a priming system like this, all your primers are contained in this primer tray, which you don't have to insert a, a primer into this thing each and every time. But the advantage is you have so much leverage with this guy because you're, you're, when you prime it, you're priming it on the downstroke that you have the ability to see primers in military cases that have crimp primers where most of the crimp is either A removed or in you, or you have a, a brand new case where the primer pocket is fairly tight. It gives you a lot more leverage and you won't run the risk of breaking something like this because this will wear for sure. So the first thing I need to do is swap out my small rifle slash pistol primer cedar to the large. Okay, I removed the, the uh, discarded primer tray. And what you're going to notice is there's a pin right here. And on this particular press, it will go either left or right. So we're going to go ahead and get it started. What you want to do is keep your thumb behind this thing because there's a leaf spring that puts a bit of attention on it. That comes right out. And then we go ahead and replace the small rifle slash pistol one with this guy. Now here's where you can make a mistake. If you go like this, this leaf spring will be forward and won't, will not work at all. What you want to do is get that leaf spring into the press itself. And then look, line your hole up, and push that pin back through. Make sure it's a little bit recessed on each side so it doesn't catch on nothing. And then test to see if you got it right. Just push it forward and let it fall back. Now we're ready to prime. Now what I have here is an RCBS primer tray. And inside of it has these little ridges, just like you will find on the Lee. And this is you're going to be your workstation for the most part. And what you're going to want to do is take your primers and open up your primer tray. So it'll accept it. And when you go like this, rattle it around, it'll make them all right side up which is handy, especially if you have something you need to insert these into, like a, another tool or something. The nice thing is it comes with a lid. So you have to walk from one side of your workstation to another. You don't have to worry about tripping over something or bumping into something, having primers rolling all over the floor. So now we're ready to go. Now all you need is your brass. And for this lesson, I'm going to be priming some 9.3 by 62 Mausers that I made from 30 out sixes, I have to fire for them. So let's go ahead and get those done. Now, like I said before, you don't want to die in here, but if you're not wearing uh, safety glasses or if you don't have any safety glasses, you can put a seating die in here, which doesn't have the um, expander ball and decapping pin in it. It's just a seating system, right? And you can Put that on there just like that. So when the case goes up, it actually gives you somewhat of a shield if the primer does decide to go off. 
which almost never happens, but that's always a risk. But for this lesson, we're not going to do that. We're just going to show you how it works from here. So the first thing you need to do is take your case and insert it into the proper shell holder. And you can do it one of two ways. You can bring the ram all the way down and put your primer into the into the cedar. Or you can put it into the cedar like this, then bring it down until this thing will recess into the ram itself. Now, now this primer on the downstroke. Make sure your primer is anvil up sunny side down on the primer, okay? Bring it down, push up on it. Run your finger across it, make sure it's seated right. And you'll be surprised how little pressure it feels when you're priming one of these, because it takes all the energy that you would normally put into full length resizing into just popping a little primer into the case. So we make sure it's anvil side up, make sure it's flat. Because in a lot of cases the um, primer will be out of your sight briefly and what can happen is if you're not watching it you can have the primer like this. Okay? Not fully seated into the priming arm. And if, or like that. And if that happens, it's not starting out straight. This has to be in perfect like that. Otherwise, you can crush a primer and run into a primer issue of an angled primer. And that is one stubborn thing to get out of a shell holder. You have to actually go through the full length resizing process again. You, if you have to do that, make sure you wear your safety glasses if you're not already because there's a chance that when this crushes, the lead stiphonate in here that's active can possibly detonate when you're trying to extract that primer. Just so you know. So make sure that your primer is fully flush and, and correct way of pointing up, anvil up. Bring your press down. Now force a ram into it. You feel it seat. You don't have to cone in that thing on her because you got a lot of leverage. And there you have a nice seated primer. And then note of interest, when you're seating a primer, don't let this thing slam back like that. That puts undue wear on it and eventually it can make it to where this thing here can get knocked out of balance. And that's not good then you're definitely not seeing your primers in an exact alignment with the primer pocket. And that's basically priming from the press. Here's a little side note that I want to add to this tutorial. And if you look at this, this these are both Lee um, hand priming tools here. And there's a reason why there's two of them. If you look at this one here, you will see that where it holds the shell holder is angled. I've probably got about 15 or 20,000 rounds that I've primed through this thing. And I've done this with military brass and everything, and it finally it wore out. Now, this one here, I've got about eight or 9,000 rounds through. And I have not yet used any military brass in this whatsoever. And the reason is, because it took so much force to get these to seat right that it absolutely wore this thing out. It will not seat a primer all the way now. So I keep this around to remind me not to um, to do that. On this one here, as we see this flange right here that holds the show holder in is pretty straight. I'm going to go ahead and insert a show holder into each one and I want to show you the difference. You don't have to be straight. Just, this is just for instructional purposes only here. Now you can see how much play is in that. And there's no play 
in that one. And now what has happened is when I'm pushing up, the force of the brass getting pushed up makes it to where the primer will not seat completely. So when I seat with this one, if I grab this one accidentally, um, I have to go back through and either finish them on this one or use the um, the priming tool on, on the press. So just be advised, if you're using the Lee, it's a good tool, but just don't overwork it. And the other reason why I'm keeping this is for spare parts.